everybody, this is Ogre Boy, and I'm going to be joined by my good friend Andrew Long. Um, no, I don't think we're related though. Um, we might be, but I don't think we are. And everything, but uh, we're going to be doing our top 10 favorite movie musicals and everything. Um, we're going to take turns going, uh, doing our numbers and everything, so uh, I'll let. Andrew Long do his number 10 first. So, take it away, Andrew. Hello, everybody. I'm Andrew Long, the musical theater god, and tonight we'll be talking about my top 10 greatest movie musicals. Let's start with number 10. Number 10 is my personal favorite song. I mean musical in the Disney Renaissance, Aladdin. This movie to me has some of the greatest songs Disney has ever made. Notice how I said some of. We'll talk about the greatest later. Songs like Prince Ali, A Whole New World, You've Never Had a Friend Like Me. Those songs are to me iconic and staples in my head. Yeah, I love the movies. I love the music and movies like Beauty and the Beast. Yeah, I love the music in uh, The Little Mermaid and The Lion King and movies like Tangled and Frozen. But to me, you cannot beat the classics. You cannot beat Robin Williams singing. And all these songs are iconic and memorable. Even the even the song that Jafar sings close to the end, the Prince Ali repress. Prince Ali, fabulous he, but not as you know him. Read my lips and come to grips with reality. To meet a blast from your past, whose lives were too good to last. Say hello to your precious Prince Ali. Great song. And it's not even one of the most iconic. So, that is why I have to give number 10 spot to Aladdin. Or as some people may call it, the movie about Prince Abu. And why number 10 is... The Sound of Music. Um, I just love this movie. It's such a wonderful movie. The cast is excellent in this, um, especially Julie Andrews. And Christopher Plummer's great too, although I do wish that he would have done his own singing because he doesn't actually sing in it and everything. And he actually has a really big hatred towards this movie and everything, which I think is crazy because it's one of his best movies. And everything, but I love all the songs that most of the songs in this movie, uh, especially uh, I Am 16 Going on 17. I, I don't know what it is about that song, but I just love that song. And my favorite things that's another one that I absolutely love. And Do Re Me, such a catchy and wonderful song, and everything. So, uh, the sound of music is number 10. Oh, and uh, before I do my number nine, I'll let Andrew do his number nine. Number nine to me is another classic, but in my mind, and it's also animated, but it's not Disney. It's far from Disney. It is South Park. Bigger, longer, and uncut. This is a musical that people that hate musicals watch and go, that's that's a musical? I like that musical. That's good. Because the songs are expertly written. These guys made the Book of Mormon years later. And that is just an amazing show as well. Plug for the Book of Mormon. Um, they are hilarious. Like, like, I literally cannot stop laughing while I'm listening to them. Even I am Canadian, and whenever Blame Canada comes on, 
I get a little bit excited. And you've got references to other musicals. You've got... You've got fart jokes. You've got swearing. You've got... Canada. And... I just feel that this, this is a movie musical that often gets over, gets underlooked, and, and it deserves more, more screen time, and it deserves more mentioning to me. That is why South Park Bigger Longer Uncut is number nine. My number nine is... High School Musical 2. Um, I love all three of the High School Musical movies, but I feel this one is the best one. It has the, to me it has the best music in it and everything, and uh, I love the songs in it, especially, my favorite one is You, you Are the Music of Me, but the version with Troy and Gabriella. I also like Work This Out, Bet On It, Every Day, Huma Huma, Huma, Huma Nuka Nuka Apawa. Um, I, I can't dance, or I don't dance. I, uh, what time is it? I love all the songs in this movie. The only one that I don't like is Shore Pace's version of Your the Music Me. Uh, it's just too fast beat, and I just didn't really think she really did a good job on the song and everything, but all the rest of the songs in this movie I love and everything. I think uh, Zac Efron was really great in this movie. It's one of my favorite movies of his as well and everything. So High School Musical 2 is number 9. And number, before I do my number 8, I'll let Andrew do his number 8. So uh, there you go, Andrew. Number eight for me is a classic one. It is the classic version of The Music Man. Now, this musical is very campy, and that's part of, part of the fun. It, and honestly, this movie, a movie is, in my mind, a movie classic. And, has a great love story between Mary and the Librarian and Professor Harold Hill. I believe it's Robert Preston who plays Harold Hill. I forget who plays Mary the Librarian. If you if you remember, please write it in the comments. And the songs are some musical theater staples such as Trouble right here, River City. Trouble with a capital T, which rhymes with P, that stands for pool. And, um, Marion, Madam Librarian. What do I say? Money to catch your ear. I love you madly, Madam Librarian, Marion. I'm, I'm sorry. Sorry, I just had to go into a little musical moment. And, um, and also iconic, 76 trombones at the big parade with 110 coronets right ahead, right at hand. And there were probably rows and rows of the finest, finest virtuoso, the cream of every famous band. So, the iconic nature of these songs, plus a great story... And a romance that that is really good make this movie memorable. And also, its corniness is also kind of kind of a reason also of why it's great because it takes you back to the good old days of cinema where there was like no CGI and all and all that stuff. And it kind of looks kind of hokey at times and maybe a little bit cheesy, but it's 
fun to watch. So number eight is The Music Man. And my number eight is... Sweeney Todd, The Demon Barber of Fleet Street, directed by Tim Burton and starring Johnny Depp, Helen Owen, Ham Carter, and Alan Rickman. Um, I just love this movie. It, I saw it in the theaters a couple times, and uh, it's just a really, really great movie. The, the cast is great. The songs are really good, although a lot of the dialogue is the songs. That's one of the things that's kind of weird about it, but no way I also like it. And it, it really, another thing I love about this movie is it takes the horror genre and musical and mixes them together very well. And everything is it's pretty much like a slasher musical and I love that about it. it it just it's such a really great movie and everything Johnny Depp gives one great performance one of his best performances I think in the and his whole career has been in this movie and everything so uh, Sweeney Todd is number eight and now I'll let Andrew do his number seven Number seven on my list goes to the Prince of Egypt. Now, this is yet again another animated movie. I promise this is the last animated musical. And I normally don't like religion. I normally don't. Let me let me be more specific. I don't really like religious movies. I feel like they're a little bit too preachy and they're not at all really any fun. The, this Prince of Egypt movie is fun. It brings music, it brings love, it brings energy, and that song with the plagues. I can listen to that song all day. You who I once called brother. I will never let your people go. And it's just one of those movies that as you're watching it, you are so invested in what's going on, you are forgetting that you are learning about Jesus Christ during this whole thing. Jesus Christ, I believe it is. Or is it Moses? I forget a lot of my religious characters, honestly. So, this is a... So, if the South Park movie was a... Wait, that, that was a musical? I like that. This is the... Wait, that's a religious movie? I like that. And to me, this is what pushes it to my number on this list. I did not feel I was watching a religious movie or being preached at. I just felt I was watching a good story. And it just happened to be religious with great songs. And my number seven is... A goofy movie. Um, this is going to be the only animated one I put on this list because I'm going to save my top 10 favorite animated musicals for a different uh, list and everything, but, um, and this one might still make that list as well, but uh, this one I felt like I just had to put in here because I just love this movie so much, and it, it's a goofy movie from 1995. This one was done by Disney Toon Studios and everything, and I just absolutely love this movie. The, the, uh, there's not one song in this movie that isn't memorable or catchy and everything. I love all of the songs in there. I think my favorite one is probably After Today, but I also love On the Open Road and Eye, Eye to Eye and um, Stand Out, um, Nobody Else But You. Uh, all of the songs are just really, really great and everything. So that's uh, my number seven and uh, now, Andrew, I'll let you do your number six. Number six is, to me, a musical that 
most a lot of people have seen, or at least heard of, a very famous musical. So you probably won't be saying, tell me more, tell me more, is this movie great? Tell me more, tell me no more. Does it star Olivia Newton-John? Yes, Grease. This movie is just, I feel special. It's got a love story that I feel that can be complete, completely relatable. Because, because everybody is that one person who's one way with you, and then you know when they're around the guys, hey, hey, you know, is that is that com completely other way? Yeah, the end is kind of weird because they have to change themselves to get the other person, but. Hey, this movie came out a long time ago, so it is completely fine because it was acceptable back then. But what really makes this movie is the songs. Like, this car is systematic, ultramatic, high dramatic. I'm talking about Grease Lightning. Get some overhead lifters and a and a something 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 over there. Keep talking, oh, keep talking. My favorite song is Grease Lightning. You've got songs like Summer Night. We go together. You're the one I want. All songs that again, just like the Music Man, I feel are should be a part of any musical theater lovers repertoire and probably is more more than the music man is because this this one is just newer it's got hipper songs it's got cooler song songs and honestly every character kind of stands out I, I personally think Danny is the best, like, I felt like John Travolta really brought it all with Danny Zuko, and I just felt like Danny was, even though he did some scummy things, or some, no, not as I would say scummy, but just not as nice things sometimes, he was still a good guy, and I could feel that the whole time. And Sandy is a lovable love interest. But this is just a movie. Especially if you're a teen. And my number six is... Hairspray. Uh, this is another one of the movies that uh, I absolutely love. I've seen it many, many times. In fact, I'm probably going to be re-watching it before too long. Because that haven't watched it in a couple of years, um, but it's one that I just love watching. The whole cast is great in this, especially Nikki Blonsky, which I think is pretty much the main thing she's ever been in. She was in a TV show that got canceled pretty quickly after this movie came out, but uh, and I think she's been in a couple other TV movies, but this is really the main big thing she's probably known for, and she's absolutely wonderful as Tracy Turnblad. And the rest of the cast, John Travolta is Tracy's mom, Edna, is great. Um, uh, Christopher Walken is Mr. Turnblad, is great. Um, uh, Zach, Zachy Wacky is uh, Lynn Clark, and is great. Um, Queen Latifah is. Motormouth Maybell and everything. I just love the music in this. It has some really, really good songs. Some of them are catchy, some of them are a little bit humorous, and some of them are really sad and everything. Like, uh, the Welcome to the 60s is a really, really great song when uh, Tracy's trying to get Edna to leave their home and be her sponsor and everything. And uh, I love that song, and I love. Uh, uh, without love and uh, 
of course you can't stop the beat which is like the big finale song i just love that song it's probably my favorite one of my favorite big finale songs in it you know in any musical and the lady's choice uh which Zacky wacky sings that i'm pretty sure that that song is about a dildo if you really listen to the lyrics you can kind of tell that it's about a dildo um or a vibrator um also i like uh it takes two and i just really like all of the songs in this movie there's not really any in here that i don't like so uh hairspray is number six and uh now i'll let andrew do his number five number five number five is remember how i said um i thought it was my favorite disney renaissance movie my favorite Disney musical overall is Mary Poppins. This movie has so much energy, it is bonkers. Step in Time is one of my favorite musical numbers in film. Just the energy and the love in that one song could push it to number five. But, but when you're not dancing with chimney sweeps, you're flying a tuck kite. You're singing, chim chimney, chim chimney, chim chim tree. A sweep is as lucky as lucky can be. Chim chimney, chim chimney, chim chim true. Now blow me a kiss. And that's lucky too. And super califragilistic expialidocious. You're learning that a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. All of these songs are... This is probably the most... One of the most biggest musicals that everybody knows. Everybody has heard of Mary Poppins. Has heard of the songs in Mary Poppins. It's one of those musicals that... It could be parodied on The Simpsons. And everybody knows what they're parodying. Even if they haven't seen it, they know the beat of the song, the lyrics, and honestly, the iconic nature of this movie could not have gone to a sweeter film. On it, and the moral of this story is just so sweet about the father trying to make time for his, his kids and everything. And I just love the father is not a bad guy. Like... When he's bringing the kids to the bank, he's not like, oh, I'm going to be evil. I'm going to corrupt the kids. He's trying to be like, come on, kids. I'm going to show you what I love. You know, I love going to the bank. You know, oh, let's go see. Let's go see the bankers. You know, I want you guys to be bankers just like me. So that is another reason why I love it. There is really no villain. There is just a father who is different. Who has different priorities and works too much. And it's not done in a cliche way. It's done in a smart and mature way. And you've got this magical person, Mary Poppins, played by Julie Andrews, and Burt, played by Dick Van Dyke. One of my favorite Dick Van Dyke performances, by the way. And all of those together make my number five greatest musical movie of all time. And my number five is... The 1982 version of Annie. Um, it might have been out in 1983, but I think it was 1982. Um, this one stars Alien Quinn as Annie, and uh, Daddy Warbucks is played by Albert Finney, and El uh, Mrs. Hannigan is played by Carol Burnett. And her brother, Rooster, is played by Tim Curry, who, of course, Tim Curry makes everything a little bit better and everything. It's just a really, really good movie. Um, I really love it. The cast is great and everything. Um, the songs are great, especially Tomorrow, which is the song that Annie is known for. Um, but I also love It's a Hard Knock Life. Easy Street, Little Girls, We've Never Had a Little Girl, We Got Annie, Let's Go to the Movies, all of those songs are just really, really good songs and everything, and all of the actors do a really great job singing those songs and everything. 
So Annie is my number five, and before I do my number four, I'll let Andrew do his number four. Number four is West Side Story. This is like the musical version of Romeo and Juliet. This is, Romeo and Juliet has been done so much, but this does it so differently. It's, it's about gangs. It's literally about gangs. You've got the Jets and I've got the Sharks. The Jets are white Americans and the Sharks, they are Puerto Ricans. And the Puerto Ricans don't like the Americans. The Americans don't like the... The whites don't like the Puerto Ricans. The Puerto Ricans don't like the whites. Whites. This movie is something that will stay the test of time. Even in 2018, we're dealing with, with the idea of interracial. One race not liking another race. One group of people not liking another group of people. And I feel in this day and age, this movie is as important as ever. I may say even more important. And the songs are, again, musical classics. And my personal favorite being, Dear Kindly Sergeant Krupke, you've got to understand, it's just our bringing up keep that gets us out of hand. Our mothers are our junkies. Our, mother, our fathers are our drunks. Golly Moses, Gene, naturally we're punks. We're punks. And this is a really emotional movie. The ending really resonates with you. It doesn't spell everything out, but it doesn't, but it shows you a way that it kind of steers you in a direction. And everybody sees the direction, but it's not forcing it in there in you. And I just love the love story between Tony and Maria. This proves that Romeo and Juliet worked in a musical format because West Side Story did it. And it's its ability to stay as relevant as ever has put it at number four for me. And my number four is... Pete's Dragon from 1977, not the 2016 version, but the 1997 version. Um, I just, I, I absolutely love this movie. The cast is so great and everything. That I can't remember the name of the boy who plays Pete, but he, he does such a great job. Mickey Rooney plays uh, Lampy. He, he's a out the, like the town drunk yeah. and he is hilarious and everything I love the scene when he first finds out first sees Elliot he freaks out and he's screaming and everything he runs into the bar and starts telling everybody that he saw a dragon and he sings the song I swear I saw a dragon I just love that scene and uh, Nora played by Helen Reddy is so great uh, I love her, her singing too especially in Candle on the Water, I think that's a really beautiful song, which is the song the movie is known for. And I also love uh, Brazzle Dazzle Day, that's probably my favorite song in the movie and everything. It's just so upbeat and, and everything, and when you're having a really good day, it's a really fun song to listen to. And I also love, uh, um, oh, what's it called? the song that the Gogans sing at the beginning, the... Uh, Home in the Hills or whatever it's called. I love that song and I also love the We've Got a Bill of Sale Right Here song. I love that one too. I love how uh, like Nora is dissing them and everything when she's singing her part and everything. I, I always like that part too and I like the part at the end when they're all like flying into the water and everything. It's just, just a really great musical number and everything. So uh, Peach Dragon is my number four and uh, now, I'll let uh, Andrew do his number three. Number three 
is a movie that is a, it's actually not as iconic. This is a pretty big musical, but it's not as famous as Mary Poppins or West Side Story or other musicals on the, this list. And that is the 2005 version, I believe it came out in 2005, of The Producers with Nathan Lane and Matthew Broderick. Now, this is the movie that got me to love musical theater. This is the funniest musical on this list. It's so out there and so crazy. It's about these two guys, Bielstock and Bloom. They want to make, to get rich quick, they want to make a musical that will close in one night. They come across a musical. I'm not kidding. Springtime for Hitler. Singing and dancing Nazis on stage. And they make it. And honestly, you cannot help but laugh at this movie. You've got Will Ferrell playing a Nazi pigeon owner on the roof. You've got Roger Bart playing a gay director, an over-the-top gay director. Think Jack from Will and Grace. And you've got Uma Thurman playing the secretary, Ula. And just this, I can quote every single song verbatim. This is just a musical. I don't want to say much about it. You just need to go watch it. Because you will be pleased. You will love that you watch this musical. Written by Mel Brooks. One of the comic gods. He deserves your time. And you deserve to watch this musical. And my number three is... Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Um, this is one of the first movies that I ever really fell in love with. It wasn't the very first movie that I fell in love with, but this is one of the... F Movies I remember the earliest from my childhood. I used to watch it all the time as a kid, and everything. My gr my grandparents had this movie, and I used to watch it at their house all the time. And then when they passed away, I actually got to keep their video of it, and I, I watched it all the time. I think I wore it out, but I, I just love this movie. It's one of my favorite musicals of all time. The cast is great. It's my favorite performance by Dick Van Dyke. Um, and I love all the songs. My favorite one is probably the title song, the uh, Chee Chee Bang Bang song, but I also love the Old Bamboo. Um, I Should Buy Mountain. Um, uh, oh, what's it called? Uh, Toot Sweets. Um, the, uh, song that the grandpa sings when they're flying in the air. I can't remember the name of that song. And, um, For the Roses of Success. Grew the Roses of Success. Success, I like that song too. Uh, and I like, uh, I really like the song where they sing, um, or the one, uh, that, uh, truly sings after she leaves with their day, having their day, uh, she sings about, about Mr. Potts' character, oh, oh, what a wonderful man, or whatever it is, I like that song, and I, uh, like the song that the king and queen sing together, the, you're my little tootsie face, or whatever it's called, I love that song, it's, it's really corny, but it's catchy, and I also like Truly Scrumptious, although that song really sounds bad, it just, Rewalk. Every time I hear it, I, it just it it sounds so dirty. Even though it's not, it just sounds like it is. And everything. If you have your mind in the gutter easily, the song will get it in the gutter. But uh, so, uh, Chi Chi Bing Bing is number three for me. And now I'll let Andrew do his number two. Number two was actually. 
in an original musical that is opening on Broadway. And that musical is, is Moulin Rouge with Ian McGregor and Nicole Kidman. This is kind of another Romeo and Juliet style story, but it was done before West Side Story. Which only proves more for Romeo and Juliet works in a musical. So, this musical is just lovely. It is dramatic. It is romantic. It is sweet. You feel the love story and it ends very dramatically. I was watching this movie for film criticism. I could not thank that teacher enough for showing me this movie. This is another one of the musicals that not a lot of people have seen. But everybody should see it. The elephant, the melody inside the elephant is my favorite part. We can be heroes forever and ever. We can be heroes forever and ever. We can be heroes. And I saw this musical on the stage. I loved it. This is definitely something. If you call yourself a cinephile or a musical lover, you should definitely check out. It is very artistically done. That is what separates it from all the other ones. The the lighting, the camera design, and the camera movements, the camera editing, the costumes, and the location really distinct this from a lot of other musicals. And honestly, that that is great. And the villain, the Duke, I forget who plays him, but he actually plays Basil in the Austin Powers series. Shockingly enough, and he is hilarious as the villain. He's kind of like an over-the-top caricature. But he's a fun of the top caricature, honestly. And my number two is... I just absolutely love this movie. This movie is one of my favorite musicals of all time, and it, it almost made my number one spot. But there's one movie that I had to put over it and everything, but I just love this movie. The whole cast is great and everybody plays their parts really well. All of the songs are really great. Um, I don't even know what my favorite song in this one is. Probably Summer Nights, but I also like Hopelessly Devoted, um, You Are the One I Want, Beauty School Dropout, Crease Light, and all of the those songs are just all really great songs. And uh, Tears on My Pillow, which they sing at the dance. You don't really get to hear a lot of that one, but I do like that one. And the Born to Hand Jive. I love that one. And We Go Together. It's a really great one. And everything. So, I just love this movie. I've seen it in the theater three times. And everything. Every time and this theater over here across the street from me plays it, I, I always go back and see it. And everything. So, Grease is number two. And before I do my number one, uh, I'll let Andrew do his number one. Okay, everybody. We finally made it. My number one. Now, this is not just my number one favorite musical. This is my number one favorite movie of all time. I can watch this movie. And I'll just be happy. Which is so weird. And that musical is, I'll give you a hint, New Calling Musical 24601, your time is up and your time has become, has just started to sit here and to be talked about, Les Miserables 2012. This is the movie that made me love musical theater even more than I do now, or than I did before. Honestly, this is a two and a half hour movie, and I left saying, more, 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 come on, give me another hour, give me another 20 minutes, another 25 minutes, anything, anything, please, I'll give you money, I'll give you more money, please. 
This is a movie that I've seen a million times and I'm going to see a million times more. The characters are excellent. Jean Valjean, played by Hugh Jackman. Love him. Russell Crowe, debatable, debatably, debatable in the musical theater world for his singing. But I personally love him. And Halfway does a great job. Samantha Barks is Eponine. My favorite fictional character of all time is Eponine Thenardier. And the songs. Now this is a musical that is more like an opera because they don't really talk a lot. It goes from somebody singing like this to another person singing like this in the very next scene. And then someone may talk normally for a while. Then they'll start singing like this yet again. So it's not a movie for everybody. And it's a very depressing movie. But honestly, I feel that it is an important movie for every musical theater lover to see. I could go on for hours about this. Please write in the comments if you just want me to review Les Mis, because I will. I could do an hour-long thing, an hour-long rant about certain things, and an hour-long of me gushing about it. And this just makes me so happy. And it's got the best songs, honestly. Um, one day more. And my number one favorite musical of all time is... ...1939's The Wizard of Oz. Uh, this movie is the reason why I'm a movie fanatic today. It was the first movie I ever fell in love with. It's one that I... You, I usually watch it at least once a year, and I actually haven't watched it in a couple years, but... I'm gonna and I'm gonna be doing a live stream when I watch it uh, next month because of its 80th anniversary. So y'all can look, look for that and everything. But I just love The Wizard of Oz. It's such an amazing movie and everything. The cast is great. The songs are all great. I don't even know what my favorite song in that movie is. I know Somewhere Over the Rainbow is probably the most iconic song in the movie, but. And it is one of my favorites, but I don't know if I could say it's my favorite song in the movie. Also, love for off to see the wizard, of course. Who doesn't? Um, I think my favorite might be if I only had a heart. Um, the Tin Man's my favorite character, and I just love that song. And I also like uh, the uh, uh, if I were king of the forest. <laughs> that one cracks me up for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, I guess it's because the way the cowardly lion runs his mouth and stuff, but, uh, so The Wizard of Oz is my number one favorite musical. So, let us know in the comments what your favorite musical movie is, or if you want, tell us your top ten favorite musicals. Um, and thank you very much, Andrew, for joining me in these videos. It was great collabing with you and everything, and maybe if you want to, we can do another top ten favorite movie musicals, because I know there's a lot more that both of us love that we couldn't fit into a top 10 list, so maybe we could do another one sometime if you want to, and um, if you want us to do more, let us know, and everything, and uh, I hope you guys enjoy this video, and have a good day, everybody.